Hey everybody, welcome to Shop Talk, the podcast series where we talk to makers, inventors, designers, and engineers from shop to shop. Today, I'm stoked because we are leaving the shop and we're going to Sunstone Circuits in Malina, Oregon. Uh, they actually make PCBs there. Uh, it's an incredible process, lots of steps, lots of stuff to learn. Um, and they are actually gonna be making the PCB for the factory experience product for AU 2025. So let's take a look. We're here in Sunstone Circuits in Malino, Oregon with Jeff. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks, Thanks for having you. us. Thanks yeah, having. Jeff's gonna walk us through the fab facility here. So Sunstone is a PCB fabrication facility called, they, everyone calls it PCB fab. Um, this is where they make the circuit boards. Now a circuit board, as you know, you look at one that's a production circuit board. It's got a bunch of components on it. That's actually the assembly step. The first thing you have to do is make the board. And that's the substrate that has the traces on it and has vias between layers. Uh, it's the first step in making a circuit board. And it's a lot more complicated than I thought it was. Ready for a tour? Yeah, we'll take yeah, you in and we'll show you what we do. All right, yeah. All right here we go. All right, awesome. Come on in. So this is our receiving, receiving area where we receive material in. And this is also our shipping area where we would ship out finished boards. So this is the final end process. And then air compressor. Air compressor that runs all of our mechanical operations. So this is our main compressor. We have all, these are just alternates. So when this goes down for maintenance or a backup, we have all the other ones, so. That's amazing. I've never, this, I've never seen a compressor that big. Yeah, it's not even close. Size. So let's do step one. All right, step one would be materials been issued. We grab the traveler from here, mm -hmm. if there was one. And then we would take it to the image area and I'll show you how we would issue, um, grab that job and we'll laminate that job up. Okay, cool. All right. So step two. Step two okay. is we're actually applying the resist to the core that was issued out. Mm -hmm. And that's what these this machine does um, and that machine as well. Okay. So it just uses heat and pressure mm -hmm. to laminate that onto there. So why is this film called resist? What's it resisting? So the resist is just so we can print the image on there. Okay. So it's um, a film on there so that when we use the LDI to print the image, that's what um, prints the image onto. Okay, so why is the lighting yellow? So the lighting is yellow because of the film that we use. So with the regular light, it will expose that film out. So with the yellow lights, it doesn't expose the film until we get it down to the plating department. Uh, it's a dark room. To plate it, correct. So okay. it will start to expose it. And the problem is it'll lock that resist on. Uh -huh. And then it doesn't want to um, come off in the resist stripper. OK, that's interesting because it's only you only need it here. And then you know I'm looking right over there, and there's normal white light. Correct, because the boards are going to be coming out. They come through this window, yeah, and they come straight into here. They go to that room, and then straight into the plating room. So you've got it all controlled. Correct. Exactly so where all the come, supposed to They be. have to come through this way yeah. to, bear, to be good. Wow. Step three. Yeah. So this is our LDI area. So we're actually printing the image onto the board. So we've um, applied the resist. Now we're going to print our image onto this board. And and this huge machine is uh, it's just a laser printer, yeah. right? It's yeah. Printing a positive image on there so it prints one side at a time. Uh -huh. So it prints it in, we print that side, we'll do the whole order or whatever many is in that, three, four panels, uh -huh. finish that, flip it, and then run the back side. Okay. So once it's been printed, mm -hmm. it comes over to the developer and then we'll feed it into the developer. And then from there, we are, um, you'll develop off what's been imaged or what's been shot and what has been shot. Okay, so the development process is, is that, is that chemical? Yes. So this, okay, so it puts yep. it through a chemical bath that dissolves everything that is not the, the positive printed part. Perfect. Correct. And that's all of the resist gets dissolved in yep. that. Okay, I exactly. see. Exactly. I don't know that. why, but this is my favorite uh, warning <laughs> image. Don't. There's something about that one just, that just <laughs> always makes me feel like, I, you know, I need to be really careful. It's very effective. Yeah. Uh, so from there, as you can see, it goes through. You got. Uh, uh, developer chamber uh -huh. and then these are just different rinses okay so it's just a rinse chamber then you have a dryer so as you can see the yeah the difference there now the resist is all gone now so the only place the resist is left is where we we want is where we want to um where we'll be etched off eventually yeah so step five so step lamination. five is called lamination yeah so we are going to take an individual panel so Excuse me. So as you can see before, we had a, a core from the on the other side. So 
what we've done now is taken and we put the four slot holes, what we call four slot holes, mm -hmm. and those are just registration holes yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what he, so after they get punched in the registration holes, they go through the oxide process uh -huh. that puts the alternate conversion coating on there. Okay. Which is called alternate oxide is what we use. Yeah. Um, and that is putting the coating on there so that we can actually get the prefrag or the resin to laminate to that. Okay. Without that, but just bare copper, it doesn't want to laminate properly. Got it. So All right. Uses that and conversion. So, so what he's doing is alternating layers of plastic, copper. Yep. So he's going to use the foil. Then he's going to use the prefrag. Uh -huh. Then he'll put his core. Then he'll put more prefrag. Okay. So this is, this is a four-layer PCB we're looking at Correct. right here. Okay. So this this is going to get laminated together. Correct. Then step six is drilling. So this is where if you had a double side board, it would also start at this point too. Okay. Yep. So the multis come in and you can, as you can see here. Yeah. Okay. So that's the resin. So yeah, that's the resin squeeze out from can the press process. Yeah. Okay. So what we just saw was step number five, which is lamination. So um, layers are set up. We've got uh, the, the copper plates that are, that are already imaged, um, copper sheets in between and layers of resin in between. All of that's compressed to make a solid, uh, rigid, kind of wafer thing. What do you call this? What would you call this at this stage? Does it have a special we name? We just call it a panel. It's just a panel. Okay, so a panel. Uh, you can see the re where the resin squeezed out, basically just fiberglass resin. Yeah. So drilling and routing happens in this room. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So drilling on this side, the routing on this side. Okay. So this is our newest drill machine. So um, it's a single single spindle one. Wow. And it's it looks like it's um it's granite, right? Like yeah, there's they're there's all a, granite tables. Wow. Right now, our smallest bit we're doing is a six mil. Uh huh. So that's six thousandths of an inch. Yeah. So you know, reference. I think a pencil lead somewhere around eight or ten. So <laughs> yeah, it'll drill a six mil that fast. That is wild. Now we've drilled the hole. Yeah. We saw it run. I'll show you an example of the holes that obviously a drilled board. And then, so what? What is? What are these? grading down over there. So that is um, basically like a what we call like a registration hole. Okay. So that is the last hole drilled for every size. Ah, uh, okay. And that way that tells us if one of those is missing, it tells us we got a broken that bit. You got a somewhere. broken bit. And you probably also would need to check this for correct. That is our indicator the... to go back and check the yep. panel. Yep. Nice. We've got it drilled and now we're gonna take it to the next step, which is the electrolytes department. Okay. So at this point we have the electrolytes process. Uh -huh. So we're basically just putting copper into the holes that we've drilled out. Yeah. So right now they're just resin. Mm -hmm. So we need to get copper in there mm -hmm. so that we can actually do the electrical plating over there. Is the electro plating happening here at the end? No, it's actually happening in the copper bath. You want to see oh, the okay. copper? Yeah. So and, show you the and bath. so basically you just have you basically just have a cathode and anode and so this doesn't have even had any of that. It's really? all strictly chemical. Just chemicals. So wow. there's four different chemicals that make up the copper bath. Uh-huh. Um, yeah formaldehyde caustic. That's what I smell. Yeah. Formaldehyde. Okay. Formaldehyde, caustic. Okay. Um, and then we have the copper uh -huh. and then you have a stabilizer. <laughs> so those four combined and that's our dosing system up there. So that will get to a certain number. Uh -huh. It calls for an add and it doses all four of those chemicals into the copper bath. And it's just automatically happening all the Correct. time. Correct. Comes dope, puts it into those two cans and then automatically doses in. And this is just going back and forth all day long. Correct. This is on different... what they call a time way. Yeah. So it just, once you start it, it once it finishes that loop, it just starts over again. Yeah. And it doesn't stop until we actually manually stop it. It's like it's about to pick it up. Yep. So, so it's coming means... out of the rinse tank right now. This is a DI, Finishing, huh? hot DI rinse. Uh huh. Step eight is next. So step eight would yeah. be, we are going to the outer layer image now. Outer layer. So we were an inner layer image. Uh -huh. So the same process, but it's an outer layer now. So I noticed the lighting is yellow again, and that tells me that there's gonna be photo processed boards coming through here Correct. before they get exposed. Yes. Right? Yep. I'm getting So it. they're coming out of the image area with resist on them. And now step nine would be the pattern plate process. Okay. This would be an example of a board that's been through the image process. Uh huh. Um, it's ready for the plating, so we will put them on our plating racks. Flag them is what they call it because it looks like a flag. So this is this is just resist that's been um, uh, printed. Correct. On the same machine we had for step one. Yes. And then the uh, and then exposed before it comes here. Correct. Okay. And then developed off so that. What's exposed now is just the copper yep. that we will plate the And that's what you're going to plate onto. Yep. Anything that you see that's copper color will be plated. Everything that's got the blue resist yep. will not be plated. 
So from there, we flag them, uh -huh. come over to here, and then we have a uh, pre-clean process. Okay. So this is exactly what it sounds like. We've got cleaner, a micro etch, or no, a rinses, micro etch, and then a 10% acid dip mm -hmm. sulfuric. And then from there, once they come through here, go into the plating tanks. Yeah, so basically then what's happening here is you get one of those boards that has the exposed copper, those go in here, and then there's a current running through this solution and you have electrons going from the uh, the cathode to the anode or the anode to the cathode. We're not sure which is which. I'm pretty sure this is the cathode and then the plates would be anode, but I would like people in the comments to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then basically these copper particles uh, move over and adhere to, they bond to the, uh, the circuit board. Um, and the copper balls uh, shrink slowly over time uh, because they're being dissolved basically and moved over to the board. Yep. So they can just keep filling these socks as, they, as the balls get smaller. So these are boards that have just come off of step nine. Correct. So these have already had uh, their, their yep. copper. They've been plated, they've been tin plated. Yeah. Now they're ready to have the resist removed so that yep. we can take them to the etcher. And the tin plating is just to protect it for the, this next step? Uh, the tin plating is to protect it in the etcher process. Okay, got so it. So all right. that way when we go through the etcher, it'll etch off all of the copper, uh -huh. but anything that's got tin protecting it will stay on until we run it through the tin stripper. Ah, okay. That, if not, we would etch off everything. Everything off the board. would go. Ah, okay, got it. Nice. So yeah, right. they bring them up over here. Yeah. We'll put them in the resist stripper here. Okay. And I will give you an example of what they look like coming out the other end. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Come out the other end, as you can see here. I see. Okay. The all resist, the is, resist gone is gone. The resist is gone. The blue is gone. All you're seeing is copper Exposed and tin. Copper. Yep. And then the tin is what's gonna stay through the next step. Correct. And, and uh, yeah, so that's step, are we at 11 now? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, so step number 11, we've taken the etched plates from step 10. Was that etching or was that, no, stripping? Yeah. So strip so and resist, resist off. Strip, yeah. Yep. So and now, now, now what we've got is uh, tin where the traces should be and exposed copper that's gonna get etched off on this machine. Correct. Okay. Yep. So that would go here and then... So you got, this is the, just the, this is all the etcher here. So, and then from this point on is our tin stripper. And then from this step, at this point, we have plated, etched it, and now we're gonna go to QC and we will do the second QC step. Okay, step 12 now. Yeah. All right. So at this point, we are looking for defects or anything with the board. So okay. we have two ways of inspection. We do visual inspection, then we have an uh, AOI machine. Okay. So this is what they call an automated optical inspection. Mm -hmm. So what, what it does is it's got a program that will uh, it matches, so it, it knows exactly what it should be. Yeah. We put the panel and it scans it and mm -hmm. it looks for those differences. So okay. what we're looking for is if there's a broken trace mm -hmm. or you have a short or mm -hmm. something like that. So we're looking for any kind of a defect that would scrap the board at this point. Yeah. And it's just, we do it in the middle of the shop to prevent it from getting all the way to the end and putting all that money into it. And you're you're comparing this to a Gerber file Correct. optically. Yeah, okay. this is sent down from Cam. And yeah. We compare those. Uh, we compare that program. Wow. So you've seen circuit boards before. Um, they're usually green. Uh, the the color on the circuit board is actually a solder mask. So um, it has a practical purpose in addition to being whatever color you want it to be. Um, so at this step, we're at step 13. These just came from quality control, which yep. I think was step yep. 12. 12. Um, and then we're gonna see how the solder mask is applied. So these have been coated, tack baked, now they're ready to be shot. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see the, the uh, solder mask on top, um, but it looks like it's also covered the uh, the, the traces and the vias and everything. Correct. Right? So there must be another step after this that brings us over here. And I'm guessing Correct. this yellow lighting should tip us off that it's a, it's a photosensitive, a photosensitive process, process again as well. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So, and that's where we get over here uh -huh. to this uh, machine over here. So we use films. So here's an example of a film. So each job, you've got a number on the traveler that matches up to the film number. Uh -huh. um, and then you have top and bottom film and then you will put them onto here, and it's a it's vacuum, so okay. it goes underneath here, vacuums down, so put it on here, mm -hmm. put this down, you'll line it up like this, and then they'll line up their panel on top, and then they'll um, vacuums down, pulls it in, it'll shoot that image on, pull it back out, 
and then from there, then you, then now you have your solder mash defined image okay. at that point. So here's an example of one that has been uh, already printed, yeah, and been through the developer. Um, and so as you can see, what was all covered in solder mask has now been exposed. Mm -hmm. So you got your exposed copper, where that and the, anything you see exposed copper is where we're going to put our finished metal on. Yeah. So that'll have silver, gold, or uh, ending on. Wow. Okay, so let's move on to step 14. So step 14, which would be the legend or Nomi step. And so what we're doing here is putting on simple terms is the white lettering here. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the lettering on, on these circuit boards um, tells the assembly, uh, the assembly crew where things go. So, exactly. um, you know, this stuff often is automated, obviously, but you got to have those on there because if you're doing um, quality control later, you're doing testing, that kind of thing, you have to know where those components are. All right, so after we've got done printing it, comes out, we'll go ahead and put it in one of our batch ovens. So we're just doing our final bake on this. So we're going to go an hour at 300 degrees to finish baking the solder mash to cure it. And it also cures that legend on there. So at this point, what we have is a board that we're ready to put our finished metals on. Actually, this is your board here. Yeah. Um, so we are gonna put solder on here. All it's gonna do is stick to any copper area. Uh -huh. So we'll, we'll put the board in, it'll dip it, and it's uh, got liquid solder in it. Yep. It'll go in, and as it comes back out, it'll use air knives to blow off the excess. Mm -hmm. and, and it just stays wherever the copper was. Correct. Yeah. These are the breakout boards for the factory experience product that we're gonna have uh, this year. So that's the front. And what you're seeing there, that's where the color sensor is gonna be, the distance sensor. Actually, that's the distance sensor, that's the color sensor, tiny, tiny components. Uh, and then LEDs right there. Um, and then that that part is for the uh, connector to connect it to the main board. Um, yeah, this is so cool, man. Hopefully I did enough for you guys. Oh, that was great, man. Thank you so much. No man. problem. Appreciate you guys coming out. Well, this is like, it's so cool to see this part of the process. Most of us that work with electronics never see this. We just see, oh, I've got my board. It's exactly what I, what I designed. It's finished, you know, and like so many other things in the built world, we just don't appreciate enough all the work that goes into this. It's, it's really amazing. And thank you so much. Glad to have you guys out. And yeah. Anytime you guys are welcome back. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cool, man. Hey everyone, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all things Shop Talk. If you're ready to try Fusion for yourself, find the link in our description. Hey everyone, don't forget to visit our YouTube page where you can listen to and watch all of our Shop Talk podcasts. If you're interested in trying Fusion, be sure to visit our website at autodesk.com slash products slash Fusion 360.